Ron is coming up behind and no sign of Carlos Sastra as they're running now through the last village before Le Grand Bournon itself. The man isolated is the man in the red and white jersey there of CSC, Ivan Basso. He's second in the overall classification, but he is alone. He has nobody to help him when it comes down to the final charge of the line. US Postal and T-Mobile, they have two riders each. Armstrong and Ulrich have two teammates alongside them, Floyd Landis and Andreas Cloden. I wonder if Floyd Landis, after the incredible work that he's had done this afternoon, has got anything left to produce a sprint at the end of the stage. The two great men of the Tours de France gone by. One is swinging off the front there, Jan Ulrich. The other is the Maillot Jean, Lance Armstrong. I bet they finish first and second. Well, which way around will it be? It's going to be a battle. Everybody is nervous. They realise now, inside of two kilometres to go, that somebody from this leading group of five is going to win the stage. And I honestly can't pick a winner. I'd like to think that Armstrong has got that ability. And I think he tried to give the victory away to his own teammate Landis. He tried to project Landis on the front on the descent of the Coiffre because the man has done so much work for him today he felt that he was the one who deserved the victory. Armstrong is a man who rides on courage and guts. If his teammate can't get the win, I think he'd like to offer this to the team. I was about to say that the man to attack will be Landis and Landis has gone and that's to draw the sting of Ulrich and that's exactly what it's done and Ulrich is having to work very hard and look who's chasing him down now. Armstrong straight onto the wheel of Ulrich. This was the move that had to be to use the teammate. That's why Landis Landis fell to the back, he's launched the attack, he's caught Cloden wanting a bit here, he's got to hold the back wheel of the rider in front, otherwise he will be given a separate time. Don't forget Ulrich in his amateur days was one of the fastest finishers in the world, but look at a counter-attack from Cloden now, this is, they've got to respond. No reaction, no reaction, the race just got won here by Andreas Cloden, it's all over, and that's how you counter-attack a move, and well taken too, because I thought Cloden was about to lose time at that kilometre banner, and the gap is there, Landis is trying to make it best here, but we're racing the second place now, Andreas Cloden, the champion of France, is about to get a stage win here in the a champion of Germany rather is about to get a stage win and a look at this now but Landis to the last minute drives on Cloden doesn't have a lot more left here but it's enough to win the stage and a slight gain here because he lies third overall he gets a 20 second win bonus he will creep a little bit closer to Ivan Basso and who knows what will happen in the final day's time trial this is a bad result now I think for Ivan Basso and still Ulrich is waiting for the move from Lance Armstrong as Cloden goes up to the line now it's not going to be far to the finish there is a time gap but the man in yellow is running at him with that usual determination Ulrich is in the slipstream Armstrong is coming with an incredible rush and Cloden has realized it too late is there any stopping Lance Armstrong in this Tour de France and the answer is no there is not because Ulrich has just seen his teammate beaten on the line by fractions of an inch that was unbelievable there is Landis that is the man that gave Armstrong the victory of the stage here this afternoon that is one of the men who's given Lance Armstrong the victory in the Tour de France this year all under front here Andres Cloden thought he had the victory slugged the back over his shoulder just a little bit too late Armstrong today Phil was full of absolute anger because he wanted his teammate Floyd Landis to win if Landis couldn't win then US Postal Service had to win stage win number 20 for Armstrong at the Tour de France and win number 80 of his career. But let's have a look at the Pacific Life uh, stage results. So Lance Armstrong gets his fourth stage win of the Tour de France and he pips Cloden on the line and he won't believe he lost that. Jan Ulrich is third, Ivan Basso, those top four riders in the Tour de France have the top four places on the stage today. Their time to the second, Landis the Worker is in fifth place. Axel Merck, Levi Leipheimer rode extremely well today and I think you will find he is up into ninth place uh, overall. So let's have a look at our Subaru moment, uh, driven by what's inside. And it's the question we'd all love to know, what is inside Lance Armstrong? Because at this moment in time, Andreas Cloden had won the stage. Then he suddenly heard him coming, looked over, thought, heck, I've got to go. It was all too late. There's no second kick allowed. Lance Armstrong sees that finishing line. He grabs it like a magnet, hits the line, wins by half a length. And look at that. Jan Uli couldn't believe it. He was just so in despair. The speed of Armstrong as he jumps on that big gear, half a length, you see, on the line. 
That's our Subaru moment, driven by what's inside. What an incredible sprint finish that was. There is absolutely no stopping Lance Armstrong. Now let's join Al Troutwig and Bob Roll. What have you got to say about that, boys? When a mountain is so viciously hard to climb, they can't even measure it. They call it beyond category. What Lance Armstrong did in the sprint to the finish of stage 17 was beyond category by anybody's measure. Fosters gives us a look at the general classification now. Lance Armstrong smacks Ivan Basso down more than four minutes behind. Jan Ulrich, forget about it. He's not even the highest ranked member of his team. Levi Leipheimer in ninth place is writing a good American story. Thomas Vogler, it's hard to believe he held the yellow jersey for 10 straight di stages. Now he's more than 21 minutes behind Lance Armstrong. So again, and Lance Armstrong holds the yellow jersey for another day. 63rd time in his career that he has been anointed on the podium like this at the Tour de France. Sometimes it's a subtle thing, sometimes it's an obvious thing. Today, the pace set by Floyd Landis at the head of the peloton was so obvious. It was so hard, no one could attack if they wanted to. Craig Hummer spoke to Lance at the end of the stage. Thanks, guys. Well, Lance, you just seem to always find a way to elevate your game. I mean, come on. Do you make this stuff up on the fly, or was this the script beforehand? No, it was not the script. It was not. I mean, uh, it was a hard day. It came down to a, a much smaller group than I expected. And, I mean, again, I think Floyd was the man of the day. He was on the Col de Croix Free. He was simply amazing. And those guys were they were hanging on for dear life, I think. And, uh, you know, we had it was a tactical race the final few kilometers, and he, everybody was attacking. So so at that point, for me, game on, and uh, the, you know everything's fair. Highlight a little bit more Floyd's contribution. You guys exchange words when you hit the top of the last climb, and even you and Ulrich exchange words going into it. Yeah. Well, I, Floyd is is probably the fastest downhiller I know, and so I said I said to him, I said, "How fast can you go downhill?" And he said, "I can go downhill real fast." I said, "Well, you better run like you stole something, because uh, you're about to win a stage in the Tour de France." And so I wanted him to go. Um, but Ulrich is also fast downhill and, and, and has a little more body weight, so he, he, he started to come back to Floyd, and then, and then everybody came back together. All right, congratulations on another great win. Thank you.